Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Kevin Smith, and in this video, I'll be talking about automotive ignition coils. I'll be going over their application and the purpose, what types of coils are used in automotive, where they're located in the vehicle, the coils construction, how they operate in some demonstration, and finally, how to test them. Let's get into it. So now you may be wondering, hmm, what is an ignition coil? What's its application, and what's its purpose? An ignition coil's application is for use in all spark combustion engines that need a spark to ignite the air fuel mixture within the cylinder. For example, gasoline fueled engines, like propane fueled engines, and natural gas fueled engines. They all need a spark to ignite the air fuel mixture within inside the cylinder. Compared to a diesel, which is a compression combustion engine that uses heat from compression to ignite the air fuel mixture within inside the cylinder. What is the purpose of the ignition coil? The ignition coil's purpose is to build and send high voltage to the spark plug within the cylinder to then ignite the air fuel mixture. In my diagram, I show an ignition coil, which is powered by battery positive, controlled by the PCM by a transistor. Once this coil gets energized, it builds the high voltage, which then gets sent to the spark plug to ignite the air fuel mixture. There are many automotive ignition coils, and they are used in various ways. To begin, I'll show the distributor type ignition coil. This ignition coil uses a single coil which sends the high voltage through the secondary windings to a distributor which then distributes the high voltage to the spark plugs. This ignition coil is called a waste spark ignition coil. It uses a single coil which then distributes the high voltage to two companion cylinders. This ignition coil is called a coil on plug because the coil sits directly on top of the spark plug. This coil is a four wire coil, which I'll demonstrate later on in this video. This is another example of a coil on plug ignition coil where the coil sits on top of the spark plug and has a boot and the spark plug would sit here. This ignition coil is a two-wire ignition coil. This ignition coil is called coil and ear plug. The reason it's called coil and ear plug is because the ignition coil sits very close to the spark plug, but it still needs a spark plug wire to send the high voltage. This ignition coil is called a cassette. It uses waste spark as well as coil on plug. This vehicle uses a dis distributor type ignition system that ignition coil is mounted on the front of the engine which then sends the high voltage to the back of the engine to the distributor. This engine uses multi-spark ignition coils. They are mounted on the back of the engine. This is a Toyota four-cylinder engine that uses coil on plug ignition system. You can see the coils sit on top of the valve cover and the boots go through the head to the spark plug. As previously shown in my video, this is a coil and ear plug. The coil is mounted on top of the valve cover with a short spark plug wire that goes to the spark plug. Generally, on coil and ear plug applications, the coil is mounted on the valve cover and it has a very short spark plug wire that goes to the spark plug. The ignition coil is built up of a few things. Secondary windings, primary windings, an iron core, and an epoxy type insulation. The iron core helps with the build of the magnetic field. The primary windings are made up of thicker, around 24 gauge wire, while the secondary windings are made up of a lot thinner, 42 gauge wire. This coil here is an example of a multi-spark coil, while this coil is an example of a coil and plug type coil, but you can see the, the components are pretty much the same. You have an iron core, thicker primary wires, and then thinner secondary wires with an epoxy type insulation. So electronically there are a few differences uh, in ignition coils. Um, here they're called married coil, married coils and divorce coils. The difference between married coils and divorce coils is that married coil shares its power from the primary coils to the secondary coils. And the divorced coil 
does not share its power. They're called what's what's called true transformers, in that um, you can either ground them or they can go to another spark plug like a multi spark. Previously shown in my video, I showed you what a two wire ignition coil looks like, and I showed you what a three wire ignition coil looks like. I'll show you the differences now. A two wire ignition coil only needs battery positive and ground, which is triggered by a transistor inside of the PCM. The three wire coil uses, still uses battery positive and ground, but the transistor is inside of the ignition coil, which is still triggered by the PCM signal. How an ignition coil works is there is a primary winding wrapped around an iron core around 150 times. Then there are secondary windings that are wrapped around 100 times greater than the primary windings. The PCM will grind the, ground the primary windings through a transistor to build a magnetic field, which is then collapsed once the PCM opens the circuit. Once the circuit is opened, the magnetic field will collapse and induce a, a voltage on the primary windings and the secondary windings. The primary windings will get a voltage, induced voltage of 250 to 400 volts, where the secondary windings will get an induced voltage from 20,000 volts to 40,000 volts, which is then sent to the spark plug. With this mock-up, I'll be able to demonstrate how a multi-spark coil operates. This box will act like the PCM, which sends a trigger to the ignition control module, which then powers the ignition coil, which then the ignition coil sends its high voltage to two spark plugs at once. So you can see one coil with two spark plug wires sending the high voltage to the spark plugs that have to jump the gap, which create a spark. So now the fun stuff, you get to start testing them. I'll start off with basic multimeter test just because it's pretty much the easiest thing to do um, and the most cheapest. So here's a multi-spark coil flipped upside down to get to the primary side windings. Just a simple ohm test. I'll show you why multimeter testing, ohm testing on the primary side windings um, is kind of something that won't get you very far. I'll just check the ohm of my leads of my multimeter. 0.3 ohms, 2 ohms, 0.2 ohms, less than 1 ohm. Now I'll test, I'll ohm the primary windings and less than 1 ohm, 0.6 ohms. So is that good? Is that bad? Um, you can't really base that off of this test. And this is with the multi spark coil. Next coil I'll get is a two wire um, coil and plug ignition coil. And where you want to test is those two, um, the two, pretty much the two prongs, the two uh, male connectors in there. And again, less than one ohm of resistance. So is that good? Is that bad? Not a good test to do. Now on to testing the secondary windings with a simple ohm test with the multimeter. This test can get you somewhere um, if you suspect a coil is bad. So again, I have a multi-spark ignition coil. Where you want to test is right here on these two um, prongs. <clears throat> test them. And you're reading about 5,000 ohms, which is good. So this test shows you, and if you had no ohms, you would know that your secondary windings are open. Now, onto the two wire ignition coil again. But this time, when you want to test, you want to test between one of the leads in the connector and then on the spring on the bottom of the coil one lead on the spring on the bottom of the coil one lead on the connector and this coil reads about 5500 ohms and again 
If you read no ohms, you would know that your windings were open. Now with a cassette style ignition coil system, <clears throat> you can check your secondary. Just want to test your companion cylinders and you're getting about 4300 ohms. Between these two cylinders, these two ignition coils, and then you get about the same thing with your the other ignition coil. Now on to a distributor type ignition coil. You want to check on your secondary winding output and your ground. One lead on ground, one lead on your ignition on your secondary output, and this is a high HEI distributor ignition coil, so high energy ignition coil, and that's why we're getting a greater 8,000 8, ohms. So on to picoscope diagnosis of ignition coils. On my screen, um, this green trace, this is a primary ignition current. This blue trace is primary ignition voltage, and the red trace is secondary ignition voltage. I'll begin with the primary ignition current. We're at flatlined at zero until the ignition coil is turned on. Once the ignition coil gets turned on, there's current flowing through our primary windings, which ramp up and peak out at around 5.8 volts. That's generally good around high 5.8 to 6 volts is where you want to be for your primary ignition current. And then once that coil becomes saturated, the PCM will open the circuit to the primary windings, which then you get a straight drop down because there's no more current flowing. You can see this in correlation to your primary voltage. You have a flat line to zero. And then once your ignition coil turns on, you get a dip. And then your current's building, your coil's being saturated, and then once that coil gets turned off, the magnetic field induces this high kick voltage around 400 volts. And this is where you want to be at. You want to be around 250 to 400 volts on your primary um, voltage side after that magnetic, magnetic field has collapsed. And you can also see this in your secondary windings, your secondary voltage. You get a dip down once the current starts to begin. The coil is getting saturated, the coil is getting saturated. And then once the coil, the primary coil is turned off, you get this high spike of voltage due to the magnetic field. And then you have your burn line, and then the rest of your energy is building off, is going away burning off. And this is on a two-wire coil. On a two-wire coil, you are able to get your primary current, your primary voltage, and your secondary voltage. Now, if this were on a three or four-wire ignition coil, due to the transistor and the shielding within the coil, you will not be able to see your primary voltage. You will still be able to see your primary current and your secondary voltage, but you will not be able to see the primary voltage. Using a picoscope for ignition system diagnostics is a very helpful tool because you can see your current ramp up, you can see when it closes, and then you can see when your magnetic field collapses and you get the high voltage induction on both primary coils and secondary coils, as well as being able to see your burn line and the engine energy dissipating. That's all, folks.